All right, in this video, I'm going to be going over a strong uh, strategy or trap that every strong player knows uh, that can catch your opponent off guard if he's not careful. Um, and I'm going to go over a few examples where you can use it, where you can't use it, and then I'm going to go over some Grandmaster games where this idea is employed. Um, so hopefully you find this useful. Uh, so let's just jump right in. So this first example I'm going to show is a very simple French defense. We have e4, e6. D4, D5, knight C3, bishop B4, the win hour variation, pinning the knight. Pawn to E5, gaining space. C5, A3, trade. Knight E7, knight F3, all standard stuff so far. Uh, just normal, normal opening stuff. Um, black castles, bishop D3. Castling is a bit of a inaccuracy for black, um, but I'm just using this uh, as an example. Um, so. Just follow along. So we have knight to c6, and this is actually the losing move, and it falls straight into the Greek gift sacrifice. So the thematic idea of the Greek gift is to play bishop takes h7 here. So this is a thematic idea, uh, taking advantage of the fact that this knight is not on f6 to defend h7, and just jumping right in and going for the throat attacking black's king. So bishop takes h7. Yeah, black could uh, ignore it, but that's kind of uh, not really going to be that useful because knight g5, uh, queen h5 is going to be pretty devastating, uh, generally speaking. Um, so let's just take a look at what happens if black chooses to take on h7. So obviously we jump in with knight to g5 check, deliver a check, and open the queen up to come in and try and deliver checkmate. So let's take a look at what happens if king to g8. King to g8, there's queen to h5, and then the only defense to stop uh, queen h7 checkmate is to play rook to e8, uh, queen h7 check, king f8, queen check, knight block is the only move, and then we go knight to h7, king e7, and then bishop to g5, and this is going to be the game because the only move that black can play uh, is knight to f6, whereupon you can just take this pawn and then win win the knight whenever you want. Note that if uh, f6 is played, queen takes g7 is checkmate. So uh, another important idea, and if you move the king, uh, you lose the queen. So white is just going to be winning here very easily. So if we take a look at what happens if black instead chooses to go king to g6. This is another try, but in this case, white can just go h4 uh, and look to play h5 with devastating consequences. So if uh, black tries to play f5, maybe hoping that white on passants and uh, can somewhat free the king, possibly, uh, this doesn't work. White simply just goes h5. The king can't go here, can't go here, can't go here. So the king has to go to h6, whereupon uh, this discovered check is going to be brutal, something like knight takes e6 or knight to f7 check, uh, and you just pick up the queen and then you'll win the game very quickly. The same thing happens if in this position, if king to h6 is played, knight takes e6 with the discovered check is going to be devastating, and if king to h8, obviously we simply just... Uh, play queen to h5, and then deliver a checkmate. So this is the very, very classic example of a Greek gift. Uh, so now I'm going to go into some uh, other examples where it backfires. All right, so this is a very straightforward example of uh, when the Greek gift can backfire. So we have e4, e6, d4, d5. Uh, just look at a quick exchange uh, French. So let's play knight f3, knight e7, all standard stuff so far, castle, castle. And you might be thinking, okay, I can play bishop takes h7 here uh, and just go about my business uh, checkmating you the same way as before. However, in this case, there is a defense for black that white needs to be very aware of. So if bishop takes h7 is played here, this is actually just a losing move and will lose a piece because after king takes h7, knight g5, the king can simply go back to g8 
and after queen to h5 there is the defense bishop to f5 and white simply has no way to continue the attack and this completely backfired uh, and white is now simply down a piece um, so you need to keep in mind uh, if this diagonal is open specifically if there's a pawn on e6 where uh, this bishop can come to f5 and defend like this um, so this is something to keep in mind when considering a greek gift All right, in this example, uh, I'm going to be going over a slightly different variation. So we start with a d4 opening, queen pawn opening, uh, d4, knight f6, c4, d5. Uh, not the best defense for black here. Play knight f3 and then e6 and then look to play e4 uh, and just get a big center here. Let's say black goes knight to f6, so targeting this pawn here. Uh, knight to c3 to defend the pawn and then bishop to e7. White plays bishop to d3, indirectly targeting this h7 pawn, potentially setting up a Greek gift long term. Black castles, white goes e5, knight to d5. So note, e5 does two things. One, it kicks uh, this knight uh, from defense of h7, but it also opens the door for this bishop to potentially play bishop takes h7. Uh, so you might be wondering, oh, can I play bishop takes h7 right now? No. Um, it doesn't quite work yet because of this bishop on e7. So if you were to play this right now, it would backfire. Bishop takes h7, king takes h7, knight g5. Simply, you just take the knight, uh, and that would be uh, completely losing for white. So doesn't work yet, but here is another uh, variation of the Greek gift that you need to uh, understand. So h4 is a key move here uh, to set up the Greek gift. So if, if black is... Uh, not careful here uh, the greek gift is uh, currently working right now so let's just say black makes a nothing move let's just say knight to c6 now the greek gift is back uh, back on here so bishop takes h7 can be played here king h8 can be tried uh, similarly as before uh, you just go knight g5 and then uh, queen h5 a big attack yeah white would uh, certainly be winning there so let's just take a look at what happens here so knight g5, and then uh, this is going to be leading to mate, uh, almost certainly. Uh, note, if you play bishop takes g5 in this case, then you play h takes g5 and open up the rook uh, with devastating consequences. Uh, so this is going to be good for white. And similarly as before, all the variations with king g6, king g8, king h6, king h8 uh, are going to be no good for black. So this h4 move uh, is a great way to prepare the greed gift. All right, so now I'm going to be looking at a couple Grandmaster games where this idea was employed. Uh, and in this particular game, uh, Grandmaster Samuel Roshevsky has the white pieces in uh, a game played in 1934, famous American Grandmaster. Um, so black has just played rook to f7, looks very passive. Um, and there's clear Greek gift possibilities here due to this bishop staring down at h7. The queen can potentially come over to h5. Uh, this knight is not on f3, so it can't jump to g5, but there are potential knight jumps to g6 and f5 after bishop takes h7 is played. So white opts to play bishop takes h7 right away, and then king takes h7, queen h5 check, and after king to g8, knight to g6 is played. Uh, threatening the immediate mate in one. And the only way to stop this is to play rook to f8, trying to free up this square for the king. But after rook to c6, uh, black simply resigns because you have to move the queen somewhere, uh, potentially. But it, let's say you play queen to d8. Uh, this is not going to work because after queen to h8 check, king f7, uh, there's knight takes e5 check and uh, everything falls apart. This is going to be leading to checkmate, king e8, queen h5 check, uh, and the rest is history. g6, queen takes g6, rook f7, queen takes f7. It's going to lead to checkmate. Uh, so simply after rook c6, uh, black resigns uh, because everything starts to fall apart here. Okay, in this last example, I'm going to be going over a game between 
uh, Grandmaster Gata Kamsky and Grandmaster Sam Shankland. Uh, Kamsky with the white pieces. Uh, black just played queen takes c5. And white has the opportunity to go in for a Greek gift here. And you might be wondering, uh, how does bishop takes h7 work? This knight is all the way over here on d2. Uh, there's no way to get it to g5 in time uh, to uh, go try and deliver checkmate. Um, but white simply goes bishop takes h7 anyway. Um, king takes h7, queen h5 check. And after king to g8, knight to e4, an absolutely star move. Um, so note, uh, if d takes e4, you lose the queen due to this pin. And white's whole plan here is to play knight to g5 and look to try and deliver checkmate. Uh, so black must do something about this queen that's hit, so black plays queen c4, and after knight g5, uh, the wheels start falling off for black uh, because uh, his king is simply just too unsafe, um, and this is a much more complicated example of a Greek gift. Uh, it does not win immediately, but long term, after many moves, uh, black's king is simply too unsafe, and white goes on to convert this for a win. Uh, so after several more moves, uh, Black simply throws in the towel after queen to f6. But this is just a, a quick example of how uh, there can be more complicated variations of the Greek gift uh, that you need to uh, always be looking out for.